Hey, Vinny Milk is outdoors. Finally over that flu thing that knocked me in the dirt for a little while. I mean, I didn't have an appetite for a week or so. I was achy. It was it was bad. Anyway, back at it. Um, update on some stuff. I'm going to, I'm doing some boat maintenance, getting the boat back into um, order. There's a few little things, not the boat itself, but the trailer. Uh, a couple things that just, you know, after... 10 years of usage, you just gotta, you gotta replace, man. So I'm waiting on a few things to come in before I can actually hit the lake, lake again. <clears throat> but anyway, I wanted to talk today about something that just like popped in my mind. Um, a lure that just, it, I've used, I still use, but I, you know, it, it always, it always alludes me to the fact that most people don't even use it anymore. I mean, there's a lot of diehards that still use this bait uh, but with the prevalence of some other manufacturers out there that have come along, it's no longer, it used to be the, the biggest thing in the world. It used to be the most popular bait, especially in the early 2000s, late 90s or whatever, in the, on the West Coast. And guys like Skeet Reese and uh, um, Brent Ayler and a few others were just tearing it up out there with it. Especially, I remember Skeet was th throwing this a lot out there and it was a big thing in the West um this brand anyway and then you had mega bass coming and they come on saying so you probably already know what i'm talking about and that's a jerk bait right jerk bait what's the number one jerk bait out there right now well it's the vision 110 in fact other manufacturers have based everything off that 110 millimeter thing and they call it 110 this there's people that have tried to knock them off um but it's but still people are willing to pay whatever 25 30 dollars for that jerk bait right there that's the that's the thing in in myself that's my favorite jerk bait too and a couple of respect really respectable colors uh i've one's like i can't even remember it's like green shad or whatever and for some reason i don't see a lot of guys throwing that but for a big small mouth i love that color um and a couple other colors and and the mega bass stuff but i've also gotten in you know i had to go back retro and i realized i had a whole compartment or a, a number of plano boxes full of these things so started pulling them out especially in the summer and fall months which we're in a fall month and i've noticed that they actually can at, at times outperform the mega bass jerk bait maybe in the springtime the mega bass jerk bait to me is probably it's harder to beat that thing it's hard to beat the vision 110 in certain colors but when we get into that summer months and the fall months there are other baits that seem to outperform this, especially with everybody else throwing it right and I'm going to show you a couple of them here. And it, I guess I didn't say what it is because I was going to say just one particular version of this company's jerk bait, but I actually throw a lot of, of different versions uh, of the, of their jerk baits, but that's lucky craft. Like I'm sure you probably already thought of that, but uh lucky craft is still an amazing jerk bait. And like I said before, I throw these things um, in the, especially the summer and into the fall this time of year and i'll tell you what i almost i lost two giants one time i fished a big bass bash um on grand lake actually first time ever to grand lake broke a power pole had to get out in that water it was super cold stripped down or you i broke the hydraulic line so i had to go manually pull the thing up strap it back on but anyway i went down i ran up whatever that elk river was and i strapped on one of the like a super big pointer and i mean i hit one spot up there and bam i had one and he was i don't know probably a five six pounder jumps at the boat spits it out I, at that point in my life i just like kind of i'm like, that's one of those ones you have to take a seat for a second take a seat turn right back around throw right back down this bluff bam hit another one about the same size spits it right at the jump spits it and uh it just it just wasn't meant to be i guess but point being is i was throwing i was throwing that thing along this uh bluff with a little bit of brush on it and man i i was tearing up i had those two opportunities to uh to weigh in and probably win i don't know thousand couple you know whatever the prize was i think we we're paying the hourly thousand dollars but uh then i caught a bunch of the little ones doing the same thing where uh, you know, as opposed to the Mega Bass version, I couldn't I couldn't get as as many bites. I don't know what the deal is, but ever since then, I started just throwing these, especially in the fall. But who remembers that color right there? That's the old, uh, that's natural shad or what are they? Ghost shad? That's a ghost shad. But Lucky craft that color right there, in this pointer, 
has slayed so many fish, especially in the West Coast, that I, I can't even remember. In the nine, late 90s and early 2000s when I was coming up, this thing right here was just in this color and a couple other, you know, tertiary colors or secondary colors and tertiary colors that are around this color, this transparent color, was just, it was it was something else. It got people in the jerk bait fishing. Just the realism of this bait, the action. You also notice in here, there's a copper waiting system. Or there's that waiting system helps you throw the bait and it shifts in the, in, but they have this copper thing. And I think, you know, there's a lot of theories with copper and it, it's, um, you know, electro or the magnetism or some of the stuff, you know, little electromagnetism thing that, that puts off. I, I know a lot of science, but for some reason it's eluding me right now with my brain, but um, copper seems to produce some kind of, I don't know, or whatnot that I think fish might be able to perceive. But anyway, so the pointer, um, oh, here's the other one that was really popular, this color. That was a good one too. Of course, you could see here, This is this. is he's got a couple of war wounds. He's busted eye. <laughs> I mean... I've caught fish on these things, man. I'm not even. I don't, I don't just come on here and and throw things out that I haven't haven't done well with. But anyway, okay. So here's another pointer. So you had this deep pointer, or is like a mid range. I call it, and I is like finesse, and that and the ghost shad, and then this one in particular too. Um, I do really well on as well. When you need to, you know, downsize a little bit. Um, really like those. I throw that stuff on the same stuff I throw my mega bass stuff on. But anyway, I wanted to go into this one because a lot of guys um, kind of overlook this pointer, um, and they have have. But this thing rivals it. It it was a one ten before the one ten, and not to say that the one I'm going to show you this is actually a one twelve, but I meant like it was that real slender look to it before you know mega bass came out with their stuff. Um, but it's this one, it's the slender pointer. And this is a 112. But the slender pointer is something else. And you notice these scale pattern colors. And at times, and guys have different theories about this, right? Guys have different theories about when to throw the translucent and when to throw the reflective one. I like the reflective one. Some, and I, I go back and forth with it. Because I, I let the fish kind of tell me with it. Because sometimes the reflective one is good when there's cloud cover. It tends to reflect whatever, um, you know, light that does penetrate the water and give give off. Some, but I also like it sometimes in the sun. Because it does give that real flash like a, like a shad. You, ever, you know, when you see those shad, they kind of, and they flicker. They give that off just like your spinner bait blade. And so sometimes I'll bounce around. So I don't necessarily have a solid, fast rule on that. I guess if you read the textbook, I believe some, you know. There's a couple, two different theories. You know, you, you use translucent baits when the sun's out and then other people will like it when the, it's cloudy. But then, uh, then some guys say, you know, you fish these solid colors to flash when it's cloudy out and other guys or matte colors. You know, I don't, I let the fish tell me what it is, but I tend to go more natural with the water clarity. Unless we're talking smallmouth and I go natural, then sometimes I'll just throw something just straight out landish and just see what happens. But here is the little version of this thing, and this is the 97. And let me tell you something about this one. though. When you go up north or whatever, and you're fishing smallmouth, this thing right here, especially you see this pattern, it's a bluegill pattern. But what it does look like is a small perch when you get in the water. Uh, when you get it in uh, in the water, even in clear water, this looks like a small perch. And I mean, this thing slays. It slays where they have where I'm from, uh, where you have ciscos, and um, and you smallmouth do prey upon um, yellow. I'm trying to get this thing in here. Yellow perch. And I've caught giant some of the giant smallmouth that I've caught up there. They spit out these giant five six inch yellow perch. Um, so they, it's, it's a huge, uh, bait fish up, up north, uh, where the smallmouth are, but this color, the bluegill, and they do have a perch color. And I'm going to show you that here in a second, but this color right here mimics, uh, a yellow perch fairly well and the, and the slender size here. Um, so I guess the last one I guess I'll show you here is another pointer that was not really, I don't know. I don't know if a lot of guys have done really well on them and, and to be totally honest, like I'm going to be honest with you no matter what, I haven't done super well on this either but I, I see the i see specific applications for this possibly and that is the pointer that's um what do they even call this thing i don't even know it's like the live i think they call it the live pointer 
Yeah, something like that. But it's a segmented pointer. And all it, I mean, when you when you do fish this thing, you see it's just got a little bit more movement and it retracts back to the center. Granted, I'm not a big feather guy, but I mean, if you like the feather, but I like this color up north where there are yellow perch. And when you do have, this is where I'll deviate a little bit from what I just said before with these matte colors when there is, um, I don't like to throw them in super clear, sunny water where the, that reflects. I like this throw the matte colors when there's a little bit of cloud cover because I think the colors stand out a little bit better where there's less light. So like this is a good perch pattern for um, when that when that it light is, um, or, or there's a, not as much light at water, uh, light penetration in the water. However, like I said, you throw with smallmouth, sometimes you just throw the most outlandish thing when it comes to colors and it works like a charm. So every once in a while, I'll just like bust this thing out, right? Or that color, maybe not necessarily this one. And I have done very well in very clear water fisheries, 30, 40 foot visibility. Just give me the big sartreuse thing. And sartreuse are green and with some red and throw it out there and you need a small mouth to crush it. But here's another really good one. And I put a little red, I've actually caught fish on this one. Uh, doing that same thing I was just talking about, just out, you know, here, I'm just gonna toss this one. And then I put that little red hook on there. Or I guess little, it's actually a little bit oversized, but so this one, I think I was, well, last time I was fishing this one, I was trying to get it to do a slow sink. And I put a little bit larger uh, uh, red hook on here. And this one I have caught um, quite a few uh, fish off of. It's supposed to be in baby bass. That's their version. Very well, uh, nice color, uh, nice, nicely painted, matte color. Phenom I mean, no, it's a beautiful bait. I just haven't done as well as I have, but when it goes to those pointers, those pointers are on point. And if, like I'm telling you right now, they're cheap too. They're not that expensive. They used to be like $14.99. I've seen them for like 10 bucks. I think you can get them on Tack Warehouse with a hookup for about the same 15 bucks, maybe a little bit more now. I don't know how it is, but there was a time where they were significantly cheaper than a mega bass. You can get into these, especially this time of year. You start throwing these around and you go behind guys that are throwing mega bass. You're now throwing, there's a whole lot of fish that haven't seen this type of action because it's a little bit different than a Vision 110. And the profile is slightly different. The colors are slightly different in a sense, you know, uh, depending on what, you're, what, what color you're going after, but you're giving the fish a little bit different something. And I think it helps out. I really do. Um, but I, th oh, I, th I don't even know if I mentioned this, but I throw them on the same thing I do in the 110, unless I'm throwing that giant one, which I don't have any more of those. I was trying to get them there. They were really tough to get, but that one I was throwing uh, on Grand during the Big Bass Bash was a large pointer and um i mean significantly large like five six inch and it reminds you there's a canada or whatever i believe the mega bass one is i've shown before about that same size but i was throwing it on kind of a bigger setup but besides that when i'm getting into these 112s 110 the pointer i'm throwing on the same stuff that i'm throwing the uh, um excuse me i'm throwing on the same stuff i'm throwing that vision 110 on. i got my six eight six ten bait caster uh, medium light extra fast or medium extra fast i like the medium light extra fast because you know one i still have sensitivity but I, I still have a little bit of give in there like a lot of guys throw glass rods i don't i like my i like my graphite style rods so i have a, yeah I, and i love that saint croix legend legend elite or legend tournament not legend tournament, or tournament series whatever the blue one is it used to be a saint croix pro staffers can't i can't remember but that's all i got anyway i like those um in the medium light extra fast um, six eight six ten um throwing it with the ones i got i think i i can't even remember the i got a dial or something but a real nice reel you know on with six to ten pound test um i usually start with eight and then i bounce around with my jerk baits between ten and if you go to like a mead or some really clear water you might bounce down to that six pound test but i start with eight eight to ten it's pretty standard for me um it's it's a very clear bad day when i'm on six pound test but sometimes i do and nowadays with, with the way and fluorocarbon fluorocarbon's a, uh, a must i always throw it on fluorocarbon one i mean i don't have to tell you guys the advantages of fluorocarbon one it, the light refracting you know it's harder for the fish to see but two it also sinks a little bit better in mono i guess if you've got the money to swap around mono to try to get baits to rise and fall i mean that's that's on you but me i'm Sticking with the fluorocarbon, and as long as I keep those cons tools consistent, then I can really adjust what the bait's doing uh, through other means that I don't have to constantly re-spool my reel. Um, but anyway, uh, I've been I've had a lot of success with those uh, Lucky Craft baits. 
they're super awesome. Um, like I said, it's not, I, do they replace the Vision 110? No, they don't. Uh, but there are things I've shown you before, baits that were discontinued that have just come back, or they were made in Japan and now they're coming back, that Lucky Craft has, that I have not only competed with guys throwing the Vision 110, but I've beat them, like hardcore beat them with some of the Lucky Craft stuff, some of the old school Lucky Craft stuff. And uh, I still throw it, and I still got a couple, and I'm trying to get a hold of more. But they are bringing them back, it seems like. And I'm not going to say anything about those yet, because I don't know. If you can go back to my old videos, I know you might be able to find find something. Because I did something on discontinued baits, and one of them has like my favorite bait ever. But I'm holding that one close to the chest for just a little while longer. I might talk about another video. I might, I don't know, this winter I might throw it out here on these Ozark lakes, and, and uh, I'll... I'll let that one out of the bag, but uh, I. It, but anyway, Lucky Craft's still in my box, and uh, I think they're not going anywhere. But anyway, I got some other stuff too. Uh, further, like I'm gonna work on this boat. I got some other baits I'm gonna show you guys, especially as we transition into um, fall. We're in fall, solid fall. But as we transition out of fall into winter, we start getting into my favorite type of fishing, and it's not. You think top water. I, mean, I I guess everything's my favorite type of fishing, but this one I'm really good at. I guess that's why I'm here, my favorite is like, I'm super good at this type of fishing. And that is with, you know, blade baits and utilizing the forward facing sonar. But before how I learned to use these type of baits, these blade baits and jig heads and, you know, wood grubs was just a tr traditional two dimensional sonar and actually use it, you know, video gaming these fish with this. And then also covering water with it. But, you know, when you get in the winter, when you get these fish pulling off and you find these, you know, some of these groups or whatever, being on the video game, and now you get four facing sonar. But with that, and what I've learned and what people are, it's starting to become very prevalent is what you learn when you're, especially with forward facing sonar, but I learned it with 2D and now I understand it with forward facing, is that certain baits reflect better on from sound waves from the sonar. <laughs> than others and it's very and if you know which baits to use and you know how to use them it makes it easier for you to see it not just on two-dimensional sonar like i said that's how i learned to do it and i recognize different baits are easier to see and give better um reflect they, they reflect sound waves better um than others so we'll go into that a little bit probably um if i can remember with all the things going on in my life but that's something to think about is you know different baits reflect sound differently and are, if they reflect sound better, you'll be able to see them a lot better. It'll pick them up on your, on your forward facing sonar, or if you still run 2D, because 2D is still, it's still relevant. I mean, uh, I guess it, well, I mean, I guess forward face sonar is kind of overtaking it significantly, but um, there's another aspect, and now I'm going deep in the weeds of sonar usage um, that we start talking about different frequencies and the effect they might have in fish. I know people have kind of, that I've watched some guys talk about it, uh, con kind of contesting or on both sides, whether, you know, sonar frequencies affect fish or whether they don't. And I can tell you firsthand that they definitely do. And different frequencies are going to affect different fish at different times or affect their behavior possibly, especially if they relate it to something negative. Now I'll tell you like I'm living in California for a while or fishing those lakes. I have seen it firsthand on, I'll, where was I? I think it was, maybe it was Lower Otai. If you're Western England, you'll re remember that. It might have been Lower Otai or where was it? it? It was one of those. It wasn't Hodges. Um, Hodges is an awesome lake, by the way. Big big fish. I think it's the only one they don't stock trout in. It's had like a significantly a teener way up there to, uh, bass. I've caught some really nice ones there. But Lower Otai, okay. That one gets a lot of pressure. You're down there and people are rotating spots. Very hard fisheries. One of the only fisheries where I've been like skunked two times in a row. But anyway, we're down there and I'll keep it short. We're almost 20 minutes, but uh, we're down there. A guy pulls up. I'm watching him. Um, there's one rock pile that I remember that is just like everybody hits. Pulls up. He's fishing. Bam, bam, nothing. Another guy rolls up, pulls up, fishing, nothing. I roll up there. I can see fish on my sonar. And they're very skittish. And I know they're there. So I like kind of settle down. We settle down a little bit. Oh, no, there's El Cap. Or maybe it's or well, Either way, El Cap is the same because there's still a bunch of people that rotate spots. So it, the principle that matters, I believe it's lower Otai because there was like one rock spot and there's two leaves or whatever. But anyway, so I roll up there, there's fish on the graph. They're not hitting anything. I went ahead and I was like, you know, I'm gonna try to turn everything off. Set for just a little bit. 
then I go back to fishing the same spot where I've seen the fish on the graph. I just know they're around. I know they're there. And sure enough, they start biting. Now, if you've ever been underneath the boat, you can feel the signal or hear it, the pinging or whatnot. You can't tell me the fish don't, especially when they're more acoustically inclined than we are, especially with not only with their uh, their ear, but their um, lateral line. And, you know, the, the those two things alone, being able to feel vibration and pings or whatever. So they're more attuned to that. So in certain situations where you have a highly pressured fisheries, like those Southern California lakes when I was fishing them, I believe that sometimes alternating between different, whatever the prevalent um, sonar systems might be beneficial. So maybe if everybody's using forward facing sonar, maybe you go over with 2D or maybe you lock down with them and you turn everything off. I don't know, but you can experiment with the various things and and you'll be surprised at, you know, how in tune fish are with their environment when you do these type of things with the, with the actual effect um, their end result could be. Anyway, I just went on a whole diatribe. It had nothing to do with what I was supposed to talk about, but it's interesting stuff. And I've done sonar videos in the past, and maybe I'll go a little bit more into this in a different video, uh, the effects of, you know, fish on sonar. But anyway, I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and talk to you guys.